r slash ask reddit deep sea divers what are your horror stories diving the day before a hurricane on a small south pacific island out of nowhere a black and white sea snake venomous wrapped itself around my arm apparently this happens from time to time before major storms they can sense it and look for things that are heading towards the shore so that they don't have to put in so much effort to get out of the sea as soon as I was in the shallows it uncurled and headed up the beach where it hid under a breadfruit tree. I thought I was going to get bitten to death by a snake at sea, turns out I was just a taxi for a very calm but rather rushed reptile. You guys were in it together. He wouldn't want to kill his only ticket to get the duck out as quick as he can, so it makes sense. Plan B, bite guy and ride corpse into the shallows. That's a fail plan. Corpses don't swim well. And how much experience do you have riding corpses to shore? Not judging. I once had diarrhea at 100 feet. That sucked. It was amazing how warm it made me at depth, but was a nightmare to clean up. I vomited at my own stench, maybe from the flu. Being wrapped in a warm suit of my own diarrhea 100 feet underwater is now my greatest fear. So deep sea de here. Yeah. Shart attack. Friend of mine had a bad hangover and started puking on a dive. Turns out you can just puke right through a regulator. On a side note, the vomit can really attract fish. And suddenly become the life of the party on the reef. The only scare I've had, is some jackass in a yacht cruising through our dive location at full throttle. You could hear the boat coming for a solid minute or two before it flew over our heads. Our boat had a dive flag on it, and we had a boy with a dive flag on it. They didn't even slow down. Barracuda, sharks, rays, manatees, dolphins. All cool. Humans are way scarier. I work as a paddling coach on lakes. The number of times I've attempted to gesture at a pleasure craft for them to stop, only to have some dude in cargo shorts wave back like an idiot is higher than I can count. Ignorant question, what could go wrong in that case? I can understand, if there are any wires, or tethering to you guys, it could get tangled to that yacht, are you referring to them? Will the currents affect you, or interfere with your session? Do all the people on the boat dive or one will be there? I mean I thought you're worried about your boat going adrift. Finally, aren't there any laws to find them, or since they are millionaires, rules don't apply to them? It is a hazard for surfacing divers, a passing boat can seriously injure or kill a diver especially as divers are hard to spot when they are about to come up. The captain will usually stay up and maybe some divers for rescue and or people that are taking surface intervals. Free dove to about 160 feet in Dean's Blue Hole in the Bahamas. It's where a lot of the free diving world records are set, super neat place, google a picture. Anyway I'd never really been past 100 foot free diving, but this was the perfect place to do it. No current, there's ropes to keep you straight, and allow a slight pull back up. Scary part is, that you become pretty strongly negatively buoyant, after like 60 feet, so you're basically hauling ass down while doing nothing, and using very little air. So I'm dazed out a bit feeling good, and counting the lines that mark depth and all of a sudden feel pressure like my trachea is going to collapse, and wake up, and realize I've counted to the line that's around 160 feet or so. Very scary moment, because I wasn't sure if my body could take the depth, or if I had gone too far, and wouldn't have enough air to get back up, which is a much slower and more air intensive process. I've been scuba diving a few times and really enjoy it, but the thought of this kind of diving, makes me want to throw up. Free diving is really fun coming from a scuba background. There's far less gear, so you feel much more maneuverable and free, haha, <laughs> it's just learning to breathe hold, that's the learning curve. Yeah just learn to hold your breath, or die. That's the moment, when you start to panic, and that's the skill in free diving, getting to 160 feet and your brain is on the edge of panic, but just relaxing and saying back quote I'll be fine, the majority of free diving, is mind over matter. 
You did well. I did 40m slash 130 feet in Grand Cayman in similar circumstances, and it was just awesome. My old freediving instructor reckons I've 200 foot slash 60 meters in me. I may try it one day. Night diving is incredibly creepy. You don't realize how dark the ocean is, until you are in it. I don't like closing my eyes in a swimming pool during the day. Duck that night dive shit. I have a couple friends who did night dives. Closing your eyes in a swimming pool. You never know, if that shark is gonna get yo ass. Jaws did a number on me as a kid in the 80s. Same with Freddy. I was an insomniac as a kid. I saw Jaws, when I was 6, while on vacation in Miami. I've been terrified of the ocean ever since. I love the beach, and being near the ocean, but you couldn't pay me to go on a cruise and I won't go in the ocean past my knees. Saved someone from drowning while scuba diving. Person had an epileptic seizure at 85 feet of water in a pitch black cavern, that I was diving also. I was hovering above just watching the flashlights move about, when I noticed one flashlight not moving, I swam down, and was met with the other diver with no regulator in their mouth, eyes open and just on their knees. The diver's buddy was next to them, and in complete shock to what was going on, and was not assisting whatsoever. 15 years of diving, and instructor training, came over me, like it was second nature. I thought her regulator just came out, so I popped mine out, and offered it to her, that when I noticed she had done mentally checked out. I popped my second regulator in my mouth, and attempted to put my first regulator in her mouth, but her teeth were completely clenched. I then pressed the purged button, to get air into her mouth, and noticed her cheeks moving, so I know air was getting in there. That was good enough for me, I then grabbed her under her arm and get the regulator flowing in her mouth and swan to the opening of the cavern, and then up over 60 feet, to get her to the surface. One on the surface, did everything I was trained to do, inflate BC, dumped her weights, got her on her back, and started towing to land. As I'm towing her in she is regurgitating all the water she swallowed and inhaled, it seemed like gallons of water. Got her to land where other divers assisted me, in getting all her gear off. She was breathing fine and alive, but in shock for a while and slowly came around like nothing happened. We were very lucky that we were only 10 minutes into the dive, or for sure we would have both been bent and spending time in a hyperbaric chamber. The crazy thing is she didn't tell anyone she had epilepsy, and when we later reviewed her consent form she checked off no to epilepsy. I put myself at risk shooting up to the surface like that, but if I came across that situation again I would not hesitate to save someone's life. Did she know she had epilepsy? I know more than one person that has dive pressure slash exertion as a seizure trigger, and one that discovered that the bad way. A 60 foot cavern dive is not beginner level. She must have had a few deep dives under her belt before doing this. Well, here is my story. I was diving in a local pond with a group of much more advanced divers, cave divers, than I, just an advanced certification at the time. I'm leading the dive, as to get used to pressures, and responsibilities of heading the procession, they are mentoring me. It is a Texas puddle, visibility 10 feet maximum, not too deep, maybe 25 feet. The known horrible visibility makes it impossible to navigate by compass, we follow a line, string, put by other divers. These lines go from one sunken item to another. So, I know I'm about to hit a small sunken boat, don't remember which one, there are a few similar in a row in a same state of decay. So, I'm first in the group, I get to the boat, and see someone's black army boot sticking out from the inner quarters. Curious thing is, it looks somewhat new, not like items you find on the bottom. Hard to see, too much muck in the water. So, I touch the boot, thinking it is by itself, but it won't lift, like it is attached to something heavy. I put my hand further in, and feel the leg continuing out, pants, the calf, and I see the second leg now. Duck with a big letter F, right? I turn around, and show a sign for the emergency ascent to the group behind me. 
Everyone has a sour face, no one wants to surface, but it is a rule that, if one says up, others in a group must abort, no questions. They wanted me to explain with signs why, but what is a diver sign for a cadaver? I feel like I rushed toward the surface, even though trying to stay calm and take time. So, we are on the lake's surface, I have this adrenaline rush, can't breath enough. So, I tell them there is a body down there. I see rolling eyes from everyone, once they see I'm serious. A fun bunch, right? So, I describe in detail what I saw. We go down, I don't lead anymore, we make a group search pattern for the line. But once we locate it, we don't know if we should go forward or backwards, as there are a number of boats on the line, and who knows in which the body is in, and how far we drifted while talking it out on the surface. Well, we find all boats before finding the original one, of course. So, our customary leader goes into the cabin of the boat and we wait. I'd say he was rather courageous at this point, went right in. Then he emerges from the cloud of muck and tells us all to surface. So, gluing information together from what we learned later on. Turns out the police or some other agency had a body recovery training in the same lake the same day. When they went for lunch, they stuffed their fully dressed anatomically correct rubber doll in one of the sunken boats for a few hours for safekeeping. Well, I died a little that day. The Bifor Dolphin Diving Bell Accident Long story short, some divers came up from an extremely deep dive at an oil drilling rig, and someone ducked up the decompression procedure, and opened the door, while the chamber was still pressurized at depth. The four divers were instantly killed, and the one nearest the door literally exploded, and they found bits of his body all over the oil rig. So, next time someone tells you that people don't explode in decompression chambers, like you see in the movies, tell them they're wrong. Geez one of the guys had all his insides literally sucked out through a 24 inch gap in the door. Glad they all died instantly, and didn't have to experience that consciously. It's worse than you think, if you read closely, and pay attention to the anatomical jargon. It wasn't a 24 inch wide gap, it was 24 inches long, and probably about 2 inches wide. It ripped him entirely in half from his neck to his asshole with everything in between being shot like confetti over considerable distances. I did a shipwreck night dive on New Year's Eve one year, and it was spooky as hell. 80 feet down, really small plane. Visibility was obviously not great, I've only done this one night dive, so these slow moving fish would come looming out of the dark. Scarier to me was getting back on the boat, because it got really stormy. You'd be looking up at the ladder, and it'd come crashing down right next to you. The waves were crazy. My brother got hit by the ladder, but not too badly, and we all managed to get back okay. I took an advanced scuba class in college, and one of our dives was a night dive. It was in one of the Great Lakes, so not a tropical place with lots of fish. I could not judge how deep I was without looking at my dive computer and vertigo was a serious problem when I wasn't at the surface or on the bottom. It was the only time I saw fish close up while diving. Several swam within inches of my mask without any fear, probably because they didn't recognize us as a threat. It was by far the creepiest dive I'd ever done. Like a horror movie. As a grown ass adult, three quarters of the way to my bachelor's degree, I knew there weren't any monsters lurking, but I was so terrified when I thought of what might appear through the darkness at the edge of our flashlight beams. I would never do another night dive, but I never felt so alive as when I got out of the water afterward. It was honestly one of the few times in my life when I've experienced outright euphoria without being on a substance of some kind. Not my story but my parents. They like to scuba dive when traveling, and have gone several times over the years. Once they visited Mexico, and went diving there, before I was born. I'm not sure where they were exactly, but my mom was slightly lower down than my dad, and looking at the ocean floor. He was looking up and around. My mom had on a gold necklace that was floating in the water around her, it was a sunny day and a fairly shallow dive, so it was sparkling. 
from my mom's path. She was going along having a grand old time looking at the secreters below, when suddenly my dad grabbed her and started frantically shaking her arm to get her attention. She looked up, and a barracuda was directly in front of her, closer than was comfortable and staring intently, scary teeth on full display. It was focused on the shiny necklace, and was just hovering there, transfixed. She slowly moved up her hand, to cover the necklace and they slowly and calmly moved away from it, and it took off without bothering them anymore, but still pretty unsettling, and taught my mom, to be a little more aware of her surroundings when diving. We go diving in the Florida Keys. Last thing before we go, in is to check for sparkly jewelry. The cutest will come from anywhere, when they see jewelry sparkling, sharks don't bother me, but barracudas are true nightmare fuel. I wear heavy prescription lenses, and can't wear contact lenses. Halfway through a week long live ebor dive trip, someone dropped a tank on my prescription mask and shattered it. I usually had a second set with me, but could not find them, and only brought one, because hey, nothing had ever happened before. I'm functionally blind without corrective lenses, I can see colors and that's about it, starting about 5 inches from my face. I was devastated, but decided to go diving anyway, with my husband as my seeing eye diver. I could see my gauges, so I felt reasonably safe. It was among the most amazing 3 days of diving I've ever had. I saw the colors, shapes, and movement. Without being focused on the details, I actually took many of the best underwater photos I'd ever taken. I wasn't worried about focusing on a particular coral or fish, I was looking at the larger color patterns. So it didn't turn out to be the disaster I'd thought it was. I dive a lot, several times a week. My area has a lot of theoretically dangerous things, sharks and barracudas, morays and stingrays, blue ringed octopuses, cone snails, box jellies, siphonophores of all kinds, sea snakes, stonefishes and scorpion fishes, venomous catfish, crown of thorn starfish and various sea urchins that can hurt you in several different ways, titan triggerfish, and so on and so on. But only one thing has ever got me. Twice. Are you ready? Clonefish. Like Nemo. They are territorial and brave, and will get in your face, if you're near their anemones. I usually respect their space, but I was distracted watching something else a couple of times, and turns out they will actually bite, if you don't leave their space fast enough. For real though, I don't have particular horror stories, but the scariest moments are probably when I get caught in strong currents, and have to crawl on the bottom to fight it, going hand over hand, like I'm climbing a horizontal wall. Despite what a lot of people tend to think, especially looking at the daunting list of dangerous animals in my area, secretors aren't your problem. You leave them alone and it's fine. Sea conditions like waves or currents, and above all human error, are the real killers. I grew up in Oz. When I was 15, I took the family boat out, and dove the reef myself to clear my head, mistake number 1. I was down at a depth of about 28 meters, 90 feet, when I was only rated for 60 feet, mistake number 2. Whilst diving, I spotted a 3.5 meters mako shark coming right at me. For those who are unaware, macos are basically the cheaters of the ocean, and they only have two speeds. Curious, harmless, and lunch, very much harmful. This guy was in lunch mode. So I hovered, as I had been trained to do, as there would be no way for me to outmaneuver it or escape it. Nowadays, we dive with shark shields, which emit electronic pulses that freak the sharks out, and keep them away, but back then, what we used, was essentially a chainmail sleeve. The idea being that sharks hate the taste of metal, so if you give it your arm, it'll bite down, decide you're gross, and move along. So I wait, and it comes, and I do a perfect move, to give the beastie my arm. Just before the crunch, however, it occurred to me, that I had left my sleeve on my bed, mistake number 3. I had my kelp knife drawn, and stabbed it right as it bit me. It swam off, and I was alive. However, now I had a series of problems, I had huge open gashing wounds on my arm from the bite in open water, and was trailing blood everywhere. 
Once the shock wore off, you realize that you're in salt water and salt and open wounds don't feel good. In a panic, I dropped my weight belt and shot up to the surface without any sort of waiting period. Hello Benz, mistake number 4. Because I hadn't been paying attention to the currents, I was approximately a quarter mile downstream of my boat, which means I had to swim up to it. Mistake number 5. When I got to the boat, I really started to wish I had done as my dad had said, and had the comms fixed, mistake 6, or that I had upgraded the first aid kit, like I had been threatening to do, mistake 7. So I end up racing back, to shore with nothing more than a Taruna to staunch the bleeding. Long story short, my series of unfortunate self-inflicted events earned me 172 stitches, boatloads of physical therapy, because the shark had actually bitten down on my tricep and attached it, and easily identifiable scars on one of my arms for the rest of my life. Oh, and I lost my deceased grandfather's favorite kelp knife, that he had left me. Your deceased grandfather was watching you mate. That's why he gave you the knife. My biology teacher told us that she once was swimming in the south of the Philippines because she was trying to find an elusive seahorse and she went quite deep at night when they are more active and she got attacked by a shark and her team got out fast. The next day they found a turtle that was bitten in half shell included that was pretty big and it's it's supposedly the last time she went diving in that area. Sounds like a tiger shark, one of my diving instructors had a scary as hell story about diving on a reef, and having a large one charge her out of nowhere. She turned before it hit and it bumped her air tank as it veered to the side. Needless to say she'd foe, as soon as she could after that, 